But now it's time for Art with Miss Kate. Hello artists, buenos dias artistas. Not only do we have a theme song today, kind of fun, but we're going to learn about a real life Vashti. Do you remember Vashti? She was the girl in the dot who um, thought she couldn't make art and then she realized, wow, she was really good with dots. Well, this woman, Yayui Kusama, is Japanese. She's still alive. She's 92. And she still goes to her studio every day and makes artwork with dots. So I want to read to you about her. And then we're going to make a different kind of dot work than we did with Vashti. This is called From Here to Eternity. And it's a wonderful book. Miss Shelby taught this to our kids on Thursday and Friday earlier in the school year when she had a practicum with me. So I want to give her credit for this fantastic lesson. Yayui Kusama was born in the country of Japan on the island of Honshu in a town called Masumoto City. An old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat where swans swam. The streets were lined with little shops and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. Yayoi's family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew, and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayoi yearned for a different life far from the countryside. She dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains in places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Yayui's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old-fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, and eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayui wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and paper. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined the riverbed and at the leaves and the stalks of plants, and she drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. When she was older and studying in art school, her teachers disapproved of her work, and they demanded that Yayoi paint a traditional, precise Japanese style. She wanted to go to where she could live without rules. When she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings, and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first airplane trip. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The airplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. In New York, Yayoi went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues, and bankers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 87th floor, they looked like dots. She felt very far from quiet Masimoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed, anything was possible. Yayoi set about turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills she had brought to America quickly ran out, and she spent what little money she had on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold. She painted when she was hungry. She painted when she was lonely. And she turned her dots into sculptures, too, into soft, tusted tubes that covered sofas and chairs and boats. She was devoted to her dots, for they were her, for her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars, as one dot among millions of others. They were a way of thinking about infinity. Sometimes, when she grew frustrated, she visited the Museum of Modern Art, and she gazed at paintings by other artists, and she thought about why and how they were made. She looked at pictures of dancing girls in swirling night skies and trying to solve them as if they were puzzles. Her paintings seemed so different from those she had seen at Momo, M M O M A Museum of Modern Art, sorry boys and girls, when she was at last ready to show her work in public, she invited all the friends she had made in New York, and when she arrived at the gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the air, shouting, 
Yeah, Yoe, you've finally done it. Word about her artwork spread quickly. Her friends told their friends. Newspapers wrote about her work and reporters clamored to interview her about her dots. Now she began to show them in other cities all over the United States and Europe. Her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice, in thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered all over a big green lawn, on a pumpkin, on a pier, on dresses and t-shirts, on people walking down the street and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again. An infinity of dots. There she is. If you Google her name and infinity rooms, you can see that online. Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she left, with many different artists challenging the old traditional style, as Yayoi had been doing all along. She still lives in Japan, and she still continues to paint her dots every day. So here's some artwork by her. Infinity Nets, Untitled, Flower, Number F, 1959, Accumulation Number 1, 1962. This is a chair, and I wish I had that chair. It looks like it would be so fun to sit in. This is one of her infinity rooms. Check this out, the obliteration room. I love this. The artist, and here she is. This is what she really looks like. This is a photo of her. The artist Yayoi Kusama was born in Matsumoto, Japan in 1929. For more than 60 years, she has made many different types of art, including drawings, paintings, photographs, and installation and performance works. Although scholars and critics have connected her to various styles, including pop art and minimalism, she has always thought of herself as distinct from these movements. Kusama's work is deeply influenced by the dreams and visions she had as a child in which the world was covered in polka dots. And she has covered her paintings, drawings, and sculptures with layers of dots, nets, squiggles, and stickers. She is widely considered to be the most popular artist in the world. Now here it says she's now 88, and she was when this book came out, but now she's 92. Kusama, now 92, still goes to her studio and makes art every day. Millions of people all over the world in North and South America, Europe and Asia, visit her installations and exhibits and share photos of her works on the internet. The collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York includes examples of her work in different mediums spanning the course of her career from the 1950s to the present. So, Yayoi Kusama. Now, let's do some dot work. The first one I came up with is on CDs that are too scratched to play. Obviously, you would need your grown-up's permission before you did this. And you might not have any CDs that are too scratched to play. In that case, we can do a paper version, which I'll show you second. So, a CD has two sides. If it's okay with your grown-ups, and they can give you two CDs that are too scratched to play, you're going to want to work on the silver side. This side has colors on it, right? So, you would take a Sharpie, and again, if you don't have Sharpies, we have another version coming up next. Sadly, only Sharpie will stick to these CDs. I tried other things. And you make dots on your CD, many kinds, big, small, medium, any way you want, overlapping, standing alone, multicolored, all one color, the sky's the limit. So we're going to pretend that I'm done with this now. Here we go. If you do two of them, always on the silver side, and glue them together, you can make a hanging sculpture if you have two CDs. Now, I didn't have any string, so I'm going to use pipe cleaners to hang mine, but you can use whatever you want. I didn't, I can't believe I don't have any string. Maybe I do, but I sure can't find it. So now my sculpture is two-sided. You would have to let it dry, right? 
It'll probably take a little while to dry. Let's say I want to hang it. I'm going to attach pipe cleaners because I don't have any string. Kind of silly, but I don't. And you can make your pipe cleaners as long as you want, or you could use twisty ties. It wouldn't have to be pipe cleaners. Anything you want to hang it by. We're working from home and we're being very creative because we need to be safe and stay at home as much as possible. So I couldn't run to the store and buy string when I realized I didn't have any, so I problem solved and I happened to have pipe cleaners, so I thought, hey, that could work. And then when it's all dry, I can hang up my two-sided artwork. Okay? That's one way to do this. You don't have to do it this way. Some of you won't have scratched up CDs. Some of you won't have Sharpies. In which case, we're going to do a different version in honor of Yayoi Kusama. I'm going to trace several circles. As you recall yesterday, I shared with you that I'm saving bottle caps. You can make them overlap if you want. You can make them go right off the edge of the page. That's called cropping. We've talked about that in the art room before. Many artists use cropping. It's a very common technique. You can trace these any way you want. As many as you want. There is no wrong way for our Art at Home series. We're just doing our personal best and having some fun. Okay, so I traced some circles. I made a mistake here. I don't care. I'm going to keep going. Now, when you fill in your circles with dots, you can do it any way you want. If you look at my example here, I'm going to cover my, oh no, mistake. Cover it right up. No one's going to notice it. See that? And you can add some lines if you want, some squiggles, or just two dots. I don't know if you recall, she also used squiggles. It said that at the end of the book. But, you're the artist. You decide how you want to do this project. I would sure like to see her work in person. I have not, but I would really like to. Miss Shelby, when she was at our school, showed the kids some of her infinity rooms online and they were really neat. It just looks like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dots and she achieves it with mirrors. It's not actually as big as it looks. It's a smaller room but it has a lot of mirrors and a lot of dots and it's very clever. Now boys and girls you can probably see where I'm going with this. Here's my finished one. Now, you could, if you want to, color in your background a color. You don't have to. You could use crayon. You could use paint. You could leave it white. You're the artist. You decide. And I want to talk about saving things a little bit because we're working at home. Miss Shalone gave me a great idea today. She said you should do envelope art. So here's an envelope. And it had, it had a bill in it, which I paid. I'm saving this, because this is a surface I can draw on. And we're going to do an envelope art project at some point. This is a net that contains some lemons. Instead of throwing it away, I thought, I'm going to save that. I could use that for a collage. This is a dried out marker. I'm going to save that too. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm going to save it so that I have a box full of items so I can create some collages. So, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed learning about Yayoi Kusama. And until next time, happy dot work.